Welcome to the MicroMD EMR Communications Training Session. We will discuss how to create and address phone messages, internal mail, and reminders, and we will also look at workflow communication. Let's begin with phone messages. The MicroMD EMR streamlines your practice and allows anyone who takes a phone call to enter the message in the system and send an electronic notification. When a user receives a call for another user in the EMR, they can easily create a phone message and send the message to that user. By clicking on the New button in the Action buttons, they will open the New Phone Message screen. This allows them to fill out the fields and details of the message. The message will autofill the From field with the name of the user who's creating the message and also the date and time the message was created. The next field is the message to. It allows the user to choose who the message needs to go to. By clicking on the search book, you bring up a list of all the users in your practice. You can choose to send the message to one individual user, several users, or even a user group such as the Nurse MA group. I'm going to choose to send this message to Dr. Primary. One thing to keep in mind with phone messages is that if it does go to a group or to multiple users, when one user marks the message as done, it will automatically mark it as done and remove it from the desktops of all the users it was sent to. The patient field allows you to attach the message to the patient's chart. However, if you want it to attach to the chart, you must use the search options and choose the patient from the list. If you simply free type the patient's name in here, it will not allow it to attach to the patient's chart. The priority dropdown allows a user to choose if the message is urgent or if it's high, medium, or low in priority. If you mark the message as urgent, it will move it to the top of the recipient's desktop list and it will put a red exclamation point next to the message. The caller to call field allows you to choose whether to call the patient or to call a specialist. This field will auto-populate with the patient's name if you are attaching it to a patient's chart. The type allows a user to choose whether it's a call received or call to make. The phone number field allows a user to either type in the phone number or if you've attached it to a patient's chart, the field will auto-populate with the patient's phone number. The subject area can be populated with a brief description of what the message is in regards to. The large white area is where a user can type the body of the phone message. The QT indicates that there is quick text or phrases that are commonly used. So when you click on that, you can see these can be added if you commonly use certain phrases. And the little caret is the user date and timestamp. This is a helpful tool to document who is addressing parts of the message. The comments box at the bottom is commonly used to document follow-up from the original message, such as documenting that the user has tried to contact the patient and had to leave a message, or that the patient was called and given instructions. The QT, or quick text options, and the caret for the user date and timestamp are also available in this section of the phone message screen. The status allows a user to keep track of the current status of the message. A user creating a phone message should leave the status as requested if they're sending the message to another user. When that user addresses the message, they will then change the status as completed. If the person creating the phone message only wants to document a phone call in the chart, and if the message does not need to go to another user's desktop, the user creating the message can then mark the message as completed, and it will not go to anyone's desktop. You would still be able to find that message in the patient's workflow communication. The date completed field will auto-populate with the current date when a user marks a message as completed. Once
Once you have completed the message, you simply click the send button and it will send the message to the desktop of the recipient. Now that we've sent the phone message, let's log in as our provider who that message was sent to. Under phone messages, you can see here is that message that I just sent. It also moved it to the top of the list with the red exclamation point because I marked it as an urgent message. To open the message, I can either double click on it or click open from the action buttons. I can also see the details of my message in the yellow sticky note. So I'm gonna go ahead and open my message and then I can read the message. I can put additional comments or I now have the option to reply back to Lisa. I can also use my date and time stamp if I choose so I can see exactly when I sent this reply back and then I can go ahead and send the message. Lisa now has that message back on her desktop to address it. The other options in my action buttons are to forward the message where I can put an additional comment if needed and forward the message off to another provider perhaps or a different user in the EMR. I can mark it as done. I can print the message. And this is what that message would look like. And because it's attached to a patient's chart, I can click on open chart and open directly into the patient's chart from here. body 
copy of your message. Simply click the send button and it will go to that recipient's desktop. On the desktop, from the action buttons, a user has the ability to open a message or they can double click on the message from the workspace and open the message. They can delete the message, mark it as read, so if they've looked at the message in the yellow sticky note and they don't need to open it to forward it or anything else, they can simply mark it as read from here. They can print the list of messages or they can open the patient's chart if it is in fact attached to a patient. This 
date will be the date that you want the reminder to actually appear on the desktop of the recipient. If you leave the activate field with the current date, that reminder will stay on the recipient's desktop until the reminder has been addressed. However, if you don't to address the reminder for three months, you would want to activate the reminder closer to the date when the user would actually need to address it. The category allows you to choose from a list such as lab order, lab result, referral, medication, etc. And depending on what you have chosen in the category drop down, it will give you a reference list for the reminder if indicated. So for lab order, if I click on my reference list that populated, you can see it brings me to lab panels and tests. If I choose just administrative, you can see I don't have any search options and I can simply type additional notes in the reminders field. The comment area allows for a more detailed description of the reminder. You also have access to quick text and the user date and timestamp from the comments area. Next, the checkbox for this reminder will not appear in the recipient's desktop lists. Simply means that the reminder will only appear in the patient's chart. This is useful for items that only need to be addressed when the patient is next seen, and it does not need to show up as an item to be addressed by a certain date on the user's desktop. The status of the reminder, open or done, indicates whether or not the recipient has addressed the reminder. The OK button is how the user creating the reminder saves the reminder. So I'm going to go ahead and click on OK. And also, reminders can be created from multiple areas within the EMR, from the desktop as we just did, but also from orders. So if we come down to orders, and for procedure, lab, or referral orders, you will see a reminder button in the bottom left corner of those screens, which accesses the reminders patient follow-up screen. Also, from within a patient's chart, the bell at the top of the demographics area is where you can access reminders from within the chart. The bell is swaying because this patient has active open reminders on his chart. So if I click on that icon, it opens my reminder manager. I can also see if there are future reminders for this patient. And these are all the reminders he has. I can add additional reminders, edit a current reminder, delete a reminder, mark a reminder as done, or print the reminder. When I'm ready to leave the screen, I can just close. If there were no active reminders on this patient's chart, you would still see the bell, but it would not be swaying back and forth. The MicroMD EMR provides a central location in each patient's chart where you can view all communication items sent and received regarding the patient. This area is called workflow communication, and it can be accessed from either the chart tools or the desktop tools. It is strongly recommended that all users add workflow communication to their selected items in both of these areas. So if you don't find it in your selected items, find it in the available items, and using the right pointing arrow, move it into your selected items. If you open workflow communication from within a chart, it opens directly to that patient's workflow communication items. However, if you 
access it from the desktop, you must put the patient's name in to access their workflow communication. Within workflow communication, you will not only find phone messages, internal mail, and reminders, but you will also find prescription requests and prescriptions sent to the pharmacy, faxes sent, orders, patient messages, records request, transition of care, and patient recalls. All of these areas have action buttons that correspond with the items just as you would see them on the desktop. This concludes the MicroMD EMR Communications Training Tutorial.